These staff and collaborators evaluated the projects based on four main parameters. The focus group feedback, the strategy, the business case, and the general feasibility of the ideas because he accurately wanted to include the products uh, that, were, that were winning products into their resources and their programs. And it was a very tough competition. I watched all the presentations and I did not know which way it was going to go. There was everything from a competitive mud run obstacle course with the freedom theme to a you know, smartphone app that was interactive that people could use just in their everyday lives. <coughs> But the winning team hit on a very excellent strategy for communicating to the NF personality type. Those are the intuitive feelers, or the idealists, as they're known. And it definitely appeals to me, not just because I'm one of them, but because it's something that young people of all ages could really latch on to. And that is Tumblr, something that he had yet to really explore, and the movement at large has yet to really dive into. And I don't want to dive too much into their specific project because they'll tell you about that themselves. The team is actually here. Uh, but I will say that it's a way to share experiences, to really connect people online, and to post pictures, videos, all around a very important uh, principle of freedom that you'll soon hear about. Uh, I really want to emphasize how creative and interesting this initiative is, and I'm so pleased to announce that they're actually going to expand it in 2015. There are going to be five communicating liberty seminars this year, including a partnership with Moving Picture Institute, where I work, where we'll educate pro-freedom filmmakers in the ideas of spreading freedom to white audiences. So with that, I just want to you know, emphasize the importance of this, how it's really going to help FEE reach more of their target <coughs> customer audience base, help those people then become communicators to you to even more have a ripple effect and how it will really potentially influence broader freedom movement communications efforts using that kind of personality type profile and the segmentation that comes with that. I think it's a real positive step in the direction of FEE becoming the world's leading expert in building freedom to next generation. So with that, please join me in welcoming Emily, Rebecca, and Alex to the stage who will tell you all about their winning project proposal for Communicating Liberty 2014. to this personality type that was given to us for the seminar 
was the concept and Friedrich Hayek's The Use of Knowledge in Society, which is an article he wrote in the 1940s. In this article, he talks about the economy and how it's going to be plans in some way. And how it's either going to be planned by a monopoly, through central planning, or through markets. In a monopoly, as basic economics teaches us, monopolies will tend to profit maximize, which lowers the benefits that consumers receive. Through central planning, he argues, that a central planner never has all the necessary information to make the right decisions. But he argues that through markets, and through letting individuals decide, and through the price controls, the division of resources will be the most efficient and the most people will be happy in the long run. So given all this information, we decided to do some research into different types of social media. Based on our understanding of millennials, we found that social media probably is the best outlet for reaching them. Um, I personally discovered the living movie movement through a link on Facebook to a side move.com. And from there, I went on a research and um, classical liberalism, um, just the relationships of free markets to free people and happy people. Um, and then a few months later, through Facebook, I got connected to a little community of like my people. Um, and now I'm turning around doing the same thing for other people as a campus coordinator for Student for Liberty. I'm tracking down all kinds of people on Facebook, um, some people that I know in person from a while ago, some people that I find. And it's a really good outlet for efficiently connecting with people. Um, let's see, viral media um, is generally defined as something that catches on online, something that gets a lot of um, feedback views in a short period of time. Um, and a lot of people become aware of it. It's like word of mouth on steroids because you can trace where it goes, who it reaches, and where it could possibly go as well. Here's some examples of um, things that have gone viral over the past um, few years. In the summer of 2012, um, Gondom Style was released. And it's the most viewed YouTube video of all time. It recently broke Tom, uh, YouTube because it um, had more than two million views, two billion views, which was more than they ever expected any video to ever have. So there's a huge percentage of the world that has seen this video because of the way it caught on, the way people shared it, the engaging aspect of the dance that everyone can do. Um, and there's other things like growth tips, which you can see they, um, they have a number associated with a specific quote. Um, and then there's hashtags. Hashtags are a sorting and organization tool. Um, particularly, one really popular one is hashtag <coughs> first world problems. And you can see in the picture there that is an example of a, a broken Mac charger, which is a tragedy. So tragic. But, <laughs> I mean, no starving or anything, but it's associated with first world problems. And you can see the satire aspect to it next to it. Um, shows the disconnect, but at the same time, you're recognizing the disconnect. So it's, it shows some irony there, too. Um, there's some other kinds of hashtag problems, things like there's hashtag white girl problems. That's another popular one. And these have gotten really popular because they have an inspired engagement. People can get feedback. They can post their own things with this hashtag, things to keep conversation going. Um, so yeah, it's satire, it's ironic, but it's also accurate and it's funny and it, and it keeps the conversation going. Um, and that's something that's really important because according to the co-founder of Twitter, um, I don't have his name right now, but when you give people an easy way to share information, more amazing things will happen. And that's something that we're thinking when we've developed this product. Now I'm just going to tell you more about Tumblr. Sure, thank you. So for those of you who don't know, Tumblr is a combination sort of some sort of between blogging, uh, Facebook, and popular social media sites like Twitter. And you come up with this site called Pumper, and it's essentially what you call microblogging. And microblogging 
takes all the greatest aspects of Facebook, Twitter, WordPress, and so on, and it combines them into one platform. So essentially, people can write, share, and um, like posts that other users make, and then put them on their own walls in order to share them. So, Tumblr has been wildly successful and growing rapidly in the past few years. So, as these analytics show, that 34 million Tumblr users are contributing monthly, and that's a huge audience that we should be reaching out to. And the search engine journal shows that um, it's growing faster than um, LinkedIn, and it's probably trending to go faster than Facebook in the near future. And we have some other uh, analytics showing how strong the platform Tumblr is going to be. This combines a lot of great aspects and allows users to engage. And that's what we should be doing at Facebook. We should be engaging people to start the conversation. Right. So there are a lot of blogs on Tumblr and more and more are growing as we speak. So specifically though, Tumblr targets a very young demographic. So the 18 to 24 year old millennial age. And that's who we're trying to reach out to. So we see that there's a very large audience we sought after. And uh, by launching a campaign on Tumblr, we can effectively reach these people and engage them with our ideas. Additionally, a lot of Tumblr users are female, about 54%. And that's an audience that we especially need to reach out to. All right, so given our personality type, the great platform that is Tumblr, and the many ways and the message that we're specifically trying to send, we decided to choose a product and launch the media campaign hashtag knowledge problems with an accompanying Tumblr, Facebook, and Twitter page that would be driving the content. The campaign would be an outlet for individuals to share their stories of how central planning was detrimental to their lives. There would be writers producing content as well as individuals outside the content writers producing their own stories and marking it with the hashtag knowledge problems. This combination especially works well for NFs as well as people who learn better with connecting to, by connecting with other people. The stories of how real people whose lives are made worse by central planning creates an empathy among all the groups. It's easier to learn a complex concept like Highest use of knowledge in society when you see real examples of real people in your community that you already empathize with. So some of our campaign objectives would include the hashtag catching on or going viral, a new understanding for people that were being underserved about what liberty is in general and how it has an effect on their lives, and to popularize knowledge problems in general or highest use of them and to inspire people to have personal connections to abstract ideas. So, knowledge is some scalability and feasibility logistics. Uh, there's a lot of ways to engage with hundreds of thousands of users on the site simply by making good content. And the way to make good content is to make sure that we're offering ways to engage with users so that people can voice their own opinions and then share our posts and then share their posts and <coughs> increase that viral media effect that we're seeking. And if we get that, we can get the hashtag to catch on. So the hashtag, for those who might be unfamiliar slightly, is a way of categorizing content. So if we label our posts as hashtag knowledge problems, people will be able to see the way our posts are categorized and when they search hashtag knowledge problems on Tumblr or Facebook or Twitter or other social media sites, they'll bring up related posts. And if that catches on, that means we succeeded. And um, as it is, we actually have a fully functioning beta online right now. So after the presentation, you can go on your phone or mobile device and type in knowledgeproblems.tumblr.com. You can see some beta content we have so far. And, um, Right here we have a graph of some built-in analytics that Tumblr provides about how you can engage users. There's a, that, um, some essential elements that you see in a lot of uh, social media analytics tools, such as the effective cost per engagement. And uh, here's actually a sample graph of our own website that we just used the uh, built-in analytics for. Obviously there weren't a lot of users, but it shows a lot of advanced details that we can get a lot of information from and how we're engaging with people. So Tumblr is very powerful and it's user friendly, so that means it's easy to manage too. And that means we can also track our growth in a very simple way that won't be confusing. And if we need even more advanced analytics, 
Google Office built in plugin that will offer how people are accessing our website through Google searches and other uh, Google related websites. And uh, onto the cost. So essentially, all we would need for fixed cost is we want to create a more professional design. Right now, we're using a, a free beta design, and that's perfectly functional and fine as it is. But we can hire an artist to make our website look very nice. And uh, as far as content goes, the BLS estimates that uh, copywriters uh, charge roughly twenty-six dollars per hour. So we would estimate to pay that much, and it costs maybe roughly fifty dollars per content post. And you would expect to have like around. 10 content posts per week. And that being said, content posts aren't limited to blog posts or articles and things like that. They're more like pictures, memes, jokes, uh, quotes. So it's not that difficult to actually generate these content posts. And that's a really good way to engage people. Tumblr really likes short blips, things that catch on. And we think that we have a really high quality writer on our staff. We can effectively reach out to people with these short blips and get, get, get them more engaged with bigger ideas. And that's a really good way to go. So, um, oh, go back, going back to our most crucial component here is um, the analytics tool. We don't have to pay that much. And we can also get third party consultants that offer a lot of campaign objectives and missions and ways that we can uh, effectively reach out to even more people if we're struggling. And uh, managing the website itself is actually nearly cost free because Tumblr is so easy to use. And that's almost intern work. And, but the most important aspect of Tumblr is the reblogging. So reblogging is when one user creates a content post, and then other users can put that post on their walls as a shared post, so other people can see what you wrote. And because it's reblogged once, it can be reblogged multiple times, and it spreads through that viral networking effect, which is what we want to achieve. So this is an excellent product that takes a creative way and promotes these mission statement. The product inspires through understanding, educates through stories, and connects through empathy. So thank you for coming. We have a couple moments for questions, if there are any. Facebook, and Tumblr. And by the way, if anyone is tweeting this event here, our hashtag is fee treat. So like a retreat, but with fee at the beginning. If you're tweeting, you can always tweet on that. And then people can sort. If they're browsing Twitter, they can click that and they can see all of your posts. The same thing with Tumblr. And so I wanted to ask the group, when you're talking about the knowledge problem, which is one of the key notions of understanding why the price system why the free market works. How do you talk to that, to people, not only in the personality type, but also in your age group? How is it able to be understood by people who really don't have a background in economics? Um, I'll take this. Uh, I think that what the Tumblr is going to focus on is providing real life examples of the way this is operating. It's not so much you have to know exactly what Hayek said about the like in his article, Use of Knowledge in Society, it's recognizing that there is this public thing being provided. Like for example, like the notoriousness of uh, Atlanta's MARTA transit system. That was one of our initial beta things, and it's our beta blog posts. And it's showing a real life example of real people who are being hurt by like a central plan thing versus free markets. So it's showing it just all out in the open exactly how it works. I'd like to add that um, our, one of our uh, guidelines for the campaign isn't so much uh, spreading ideology. We feel that uh, the best way to engage people is to get them interested in smaller ideas. So uh, we're all Students for Liberty campus coordinators, and while it might be effective to run tabling campaigns and hand out books and so on, we want to get people interested in small things, like people thinking about how subways work and why central planning is ineffective, and then we can lead them on to explore more ideas about uh, liberty and freedom. Hi, first of all, I want to congratulate all of you for an amazing accomplishment, and uh, you're, you're doing, I think, great work that's really going to change the world for your generation. And my question is, um, obviously you need some money to get this to the next level. Where are you today? 
and what's the next step and, and how is it being funded? Okay, so um, again, so there are a lot of small costs. Uh, essentially, if we had no money right now, we could run the blog just fine. We would just need people to create content. We could even share content from other users. Uh, for example, we could use, um, we could ask writers from liberty.me to share their posts on our Tumblr page, where we could free blog that. So it's a win-win, they get more popular in their views, and then we get to share our content. So, as it is right now, we can actually launch the platform for free. As far as funding goes, uh, we believe uh, the fee would be able to provide a substantial amount uh, that would be able to launch the blog, and we can provide more funds as we need it. So again, the initial fixed costs are quite low. Uh, the only cost we really need to worry about primarily is making sure we have high quality content. So if people are willing to contribute voluntarily, that's even better, so it would be free. And uh, the other costs we listed, those are just for enhancing things, such as um, advanced uh, analytical consulting, where people who have launched campaigns for Coca-Cola and AT&T have used Tumblr. So those are the costs we were talking about, and they're more uh, additional, not so much uh, what we need right now. Congratulations to you all too. I just I want to admit publicly that Fred Smith and I don't know hashtag we don't know anything about this. Because you, admit, <laughs> you show us Fred and me and anyone else who wants to learn, can you show us where to get to where you're going and all that hashtag? Can you teach us? Not right now. At a break. <laughs> I was going to make some GIFs, like short videos, to give a more example, but I did not do that. That might have been helpful for you. But yeah, we'll definitely do that. Yeah, I should do a comment that although it was out in inadvertently, nonetheless, it's true. But there is this feeling sometimes uh, that if you look at the Twitter and everything else, um, YouTube and everything, you have the impression that what we're going to do is to elect a kitty cat for the President of the United States as the most popular in the United States. It, it sort of doesn't quite, I don't understand it.
fact that we haven't established this kind of an activity on Tumblr yet is not for lack of interest. It's definitely on the agenda. This, this is not, you know, buying the sky stuff. Uh, our social media, the platforms that we're interested in are Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and LinkedIn, as well as Tumblr. And we've kind of uh, focused on Facebook initially, and then I thought it's a little bit old-fashioned to focus on Facebook these days. Uh, but we had a tremendous focus on it last year, and we got to the point where there's, there's something on Facebook called reach, which is that viral effect that Alan was talking about. Uh, whereby you share content with people who are connected with you and they share with their friends and it, it moves on from there. Uh, reach is published by Facebook and it's how many individuals on Facebook you reached in the course of the year. And our reach last year was over one million people. Uh, typically that's with Freeman articles that are posted one at a time and that's actually how we publish the Freeman, is post them on, online and through Facebook. Uh, so we've now, we've now turned to Twitter and, and started to put some serious resources into it. Again, it's just a matter of, um, you know, knocking these things down one at a time. And, and we've, we've just started, but one interesting uh, fact is, you know, Larry po uh, posted a, a Freeman article, I believe it was Friday, yesterday, uh, which was one of our cliches of progressivism. It's a series, and the, and the cliche Larry was writing about, the cliche was, Jesus Christ was a progressivist. Right? Jesus Christ was a progressive, and uh, it's it's starting to go viral. We've got, what is it, over 2,700 shares so far on social media, and we're really pleased that our single largest source of shares on social media now is Twitter, although we've only really been in the Twitter business for about two or three weeks. Uh, so we are kind of setting up these social media sites and trying to explore how we can put the right resources against them, and it's, it's really helping us uh, to drive the kind of, of uh, uh, presence uh, with young people that we're like, we'd like to achieve. Um, oh, another thing is, you know, Jeffrey Tucker, who's a, a really director of our, our effort there, in his demonstrations in the afternoon, which he'll do twice, once at 2 and once at 3.30, uh, he will be happy to explore all of these ideas and he'll probably be, he would love to explain hashtags to you and show just how it is that it just in a very meaningful way we're able to incorporate these new technologies into our outreach.